So near yet so far, came the observation to his mind. But at least I know where our tools are. Then he noticed the eyes of both Arfet and Daphne had widened in alarm. Arfet appeared almost in tears, a visage Albion never imagined he would see. But with the strange shackles binding them, even the best assassin of the Ottoman Empire couldn't find a way to break free. Albion had never felt so impotent, and it was an unfamiliar, despondent sensation. A situation such as this had never arisen. Even when being chased by hordes of Nejet, the professor had been there, fighting at the forefront. Now Lucius was unconscious, and all of them were now gagged and shackled by unworldly bonds of cloth. Though the shackles looked deceptively fragile, they were fortified by power, making them stronger than the best magical chains Albion had ever had the displeasure to see in the course of his studies. Ladies and gentlemen, Dampiers of all clans, kindly attend to your host. Before us are two of the best examples of mortal strength, a Sumus Magister, the leading practitioner of magic in the West, and on my right, facing him, the Sui Kaskila assassin of the Ottoman Empire, representing the acme of human physical martial abilities. One shall make my children stronger, and the other shall be my queen, announced Alexander. I am going to enjoy this part of the drama, Alexander remarked, as he moved behind Arfet's form. She was tied to a massive crossbeam frame, facing the still unconscious Lucius. The dark creature positioned himself at the back, directly behind Arfet's neck. Wake him up, he ordered the dark beasts closest to Lucius. A bucket of water was promptly produced and thrown at the slumped high mage. Lucius stirred into wakefulness. As he opened his eyes, the sight that met him shocked him to the core. Alexander closely stood behind Arfet, mouth opened, with long white fangs extended and nearly touching the neck of the terrified assassin. The face of the panic-stricken Arfet was one he would remember forever. Their helpless and pleading eyes were an unbearable sight. Alexander smiled at the recovering Lucius for an instant and then sank his fangs into the bound victim. Arfet's eyes widened and then closed. She slumped, held up only by her bonds. Anger beyond measure filled the high mage, crushing the barriers of self-control he had built up over the long years. A wave of cold and calculating fury encompassed his mind. Lucius's thinking immeasurably sped up, but he knew he needed a few more minutes to fully recover. The devilish thing in front of him was clearly a powerful one. The pulsating medallion tinged with red streaks gave that much away. He had seen such similar crystals before, but only twice, in all of the decades of fighting the dark. They were of demonic origin, and very powerful indeed.'